This is the lesson for 2.4a, dividing polynomials. In our lesson today, we are going to divide a polynomial by another polynomial using both long division and synthetic division. These should both be a review from Algebra 2. First, we're going to look at long division. In long division, we do our division of our polynomials in numeric long division form with a division bar and the dividend underneath and the divisor outside, and then we find the quotient, and this is how it works. So I've set up my problem. I'm taking the polynomial x squared plus 14x plus 45 and dividing by the binomial, two terms, x plus 9. What I want to do is look at the first term in my divisor, which is x, and I want to think how many times do I need to multiply x by to get the first term in my polynomial, x squared, and that would be x. So I'm going to put an x over there above my uh, term x squared, and I'm going to multiply what I just wrote, x times my divisor x plus 9, and that gives me x squared plus 9x. And now what I'm going to do is you could subtract, but it, most math teachers will add the opposite because students tend to make less errors when they add rather than subtract because of the signs. And so I'm going to show you with adding. The first terms cancel. The 14x plus the negative 9x is positive 5x. And then I'm going to carry down the next term of 45. And then I'm going to repeat the process. I look at the first term of my divisor, x plus 9, which is x. And I think, what am I going to multiply x by to get 5x? And that would be a positive 5. So I'm going to write that down in my answer and then take 5 times my divisor, x plus 9, and when I distribute, that gives me 5x plus 45. And again, I know you might think, well, it's obvious they subtract out, but I am going to add the opposite. Again, it's not always going to work that way, and this way you can see, indeed, we do get 0. So x plus 9 went in evenly and gave us a quotient of x plus 5. You might notice that x plus 9 and x plus 5 are the factors of x squared plus 14x plus 45. And that's because it went in evenly. But that's not always going to be the case. In our second example, we are given a polynomial that is not written in standard form. The first thing you want to do is rewrite it by putting the highest degree term first. So I'm going to have 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 11x plus 7. And I'm still dividing by the binomial x minus 3. And I already have it set up under the division bar. So my dividend 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 11x plus 7 is being divided by my divisor x minus 3. And so I'm looking at the first term in my divisor x, and I would multiply that by 2x squared to get the first term. And so now I want to distribute that with my divisor, and that's going to give me 2x cubed minus 6x squared. And I will take the opposite. Here, when I change subtraction to addition, it actually changes the sign. And when I add, I get 3x squared minus 11x. I carry down the next term so that I have the same number of terms as are in my divisor, which is 2. So now I repeat the process. x times what is 3x squared? That would be a positive 3x, and I will take 3x 
times my divisor, x minus 3, that will give me 3x squared minus 9x. And now I will add the opposite. The 3x squareds cancel out. That gives me negative 2x. And I carry down my last term, positive 7, and I repeat the process again. And the x in my divisor times negative 2 would give me negative 2x. And negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. But then I add the opposite. And when I do that, I'm left with a positive 1. Now, the remainder, the positive 1, gets expressed in my answer as 1 over the divisor x minus 3. So my answer is 2x squared plus 3x minus 2 plus my remainder 1 over my divisor x minus 3. So that's long division. What is synthetic division? Well, it's a special type of division that you probably like because all you have to work with are the numbers, the coefficients, and you're basically just multiplying and adding repeatedly. But the downfall of synthetic division is it can only be used when you're dividing a polynomial by a binomial, two terms, and it has to be of the form 1x minus c. So let's go down here. And in the last problem I did, I actually had the form of a polynomial divided by a binomial of the form x minus c. You have to understand c is a positive 3, and that positive 3 I put in the half box. You'll probably remember this from Algebra 2. Going across the top, there's two lines. The first line will be the coefficients in my polynomial going from uh, leading coefficient down to the constant term, assuming there is one, just from uh, standard form. You do add zeros for any missing powers, but here we have an x cubed, x squared, x to the first, and 7 is the coefficient of x to the 0, so we don't have to add any zeros in our line of coefficients. You may recall in synthetic division, you carry down the leading coefficient, and then you do a series of repeated multiplications and additions. I take the leading coefficient 2 times the 3 in my half box, which gives me 6, and I write it in the next column under my next coefficient. And then I add negative 3 plus 6 is 3. And then I multiply the 3 times the 3 in the half box, which gives me 9. And I write that under my next coefficient. When I add, that's negative 2. And then I multiply negative 2 times the 3 again. That's negative 6. And when I add, that's 1. The difference in synthetic division and long division is I don't have the variables in my answer. So we have to interpret the result of our synthetic division. Those numbers in that third line are the coefficients of my polynomial one degree less than what I started with. So my ri original problem was 2x cubed this 2 in my line of coefficients is going to be the coefficient of the 1 degree less, which would be 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. And the reason we have that vertical bar is to separate the remainder, which is 1, from the rest of the quotient. And remember, the remainder gets written over the divisor. The divisor is not the three in the half box, it's what the three in the half box represents, which is x minus three. Let's try that with the second problem. This time we have our divisor, and again, it's of the form um, x minus c. Now you do have to understand 
how it became plus two is it actually started as minus a negative two. So C that goes in the half box is the opposite of that operation, and it's really a negative two. With my coefficients, I have a one for my x cubed term, but then you have to notice and be alert that there's no squared term and you put a zero in your line of coefficients. Then I will have negative seven and finally negative six. So one x cubed, zero x squared, negative seven x to the first, minus six x to the zero. And again, I bring my leading coefficient down, and then I go through a series of multiplication and addition. So one times negative two is negative two, and when I add, that's negative two. And then negative two times negative two is positive four. And when I write that in the next column, negative seven plus four is negative three. Then negative three times negative two is positive six, and when we add, we actually get a remainder of zero, which is fine. As we express our answer, remember the line of numbers is, are the coefficients one degree less than the original polynomial. So since the first term was x cubed, this means we have 1x squared minus 2x minus 3. Notice how the degree drops by one each time when you write the next term. All right, the final thing we wanna look at is the remainder theorem. You may recall the remainder theorem is a way we can evaluate a polynomial function using synthetic division. It says if the polynomial f of x is divided by x minus c, then the remainder is f of c. So let's see how that works. So in my problem, it, I, I have f of x equals 3x cubed plus 4x squared minus 5x plus 3. And I'm asked to find f of negative 4. Now, I could use direct substitution, but when I plug in using direct substitution, sometimes I can make mistakes with powers. So synthetic substitution gives a nice alternative. So how that works is I actually plug that C value, that negative four, that's gonna be C, into my half box, and I take the coefficients in my polynomial, and I just do synthetic division. So I'm gonna drop the leading coefficient three below the line. Negative four times three is negative 12. And when I add, that's negative 8. Then negative 4 times negative 8 is positive 32. And when I add, that is 27. And then finally, negative 4 times 27 is negative 108. And when I add, that's negative 105. I'm suggesting that the remainder you just got right here, is equivalent to what you would get if you did direct substitution. The interpretation is that f of negative 4 equals negative 105. And if you are skeptical that that's the case, plug negative 4 in for x and evaluate and see if that's the case. But that is what the remainder theorem is all about. It says, if you go back up here, that the remainder um, is f of c. And so that's the cool thing. When you do synthetic division, the remainder you get is equivalent to evaluating f of that value c in the half box. All right, I hope that helps. And your assignment is my math lab 2.4a. Have a great day.